Joe Biden went to Kiev. A daring move, we have to say. Kiev has been under attack. Just last week, Russia targeted the city with missiles. But U.S. President Joe Biden, who has one of the world's most elaborate security arrangements, decided to go anyway. His team kept the visit a secret till the very last minute. No Air Force One. The U.S. President took a train from Poland. What was the purpose of this visit? Was it just about the pictures to show an American president in the middle of a war zone? They like doing that. Or was, was there any substance to the trip? Well, a bit of both, to be fair. Biden took a walk through downtown Kiev. He was accompanied by Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky. The U.S. President paid a visit to St. Michael's Monastery and the Wall of Remembrance, where portraits of more than 4,500 soldiers are displayed. These are those who died when Russia annexed Crimea. Biden paid a tribute to these soldiers. Air sirens were sounded at that moment. So those were the optics. Now let's talk about the substance. Biden did not go to Kiev empty-handed. He announced a fresh round of military assistance to Ukraine, a package of $500 million. What does it entail? What will Ukraine get? More ammunition, javelins and howitzers, but no fighter jets. And that is the headline. No fighter jets for Ukraine. A fresh round of sanctions was also part of today's announcement. Democracy stands. The Americans stand with you and the world stands with you. Kiev has captured a part of my heart, I must say. Together, we've committed nearly 700 tanks and thousands of armored vehicles, 1,000 artillery systems, more than 2 million rounds of artillery ammunition, more than 50 advanced launch rocket systems, anti-ship and air defense systems, all defend you to defend Ukraine, and that doesn't count the other half a billion dollars we're going to be we're announcing with you today and tomorrow. That's going to be coming your way. Kiev would paint this visit as a victory, but they clearly want more. They won the jets. What about Joe Biden? Well, he got the timing right, at least. His visit comes just before a major speech. Russian President Vladimir Putin will deliver an address tomorrow. Putin is expected to talk about the war, among other things. So Biden timed his visit to a day before that. And yet the moves of an adversary could append Biden's plans. I'm talking about China. Is China entering the war in Ukraine? The U.S. says it is. It says that China is all set to arm Russia. The statement comes from U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. He met with his Chinese counterpart in Munich, and this is what he said. We also had an opportunity to talk about the Russian aggression against Ukraine. We're here in Munich, and many of the countries here are focused, as we are, on that aggression. And one of the things that I shared with him was uh, a growing concern on our part uh, that China is considering providing lethal support to Russia in its aggression against Ukraine. The U.S. is warning China. It says any escalation will have serious consequences. What is China's response? It's being cagey. It says it won't accept, quote-unquote, finger-pointing and coercion from the United States. It called the American claims lies. But will it send weapons to Russia? No word on that. If China does, it would change everything. If China arms Russia, the implications will be wide-ranging. The Russian offensive will get a new lease of life. China's support might encourage Putin to make bold moves. The conflict itself could transform. The war in Ukraine is already being seen as a bit of a proxy battle. The West is arming Kiev. If China enters the fray, we'll have two superpowers on both sides. China, Russia, Iran and North Korea will be one bloc. The US and allies will be the other. And they'll have no option but to pump more weapons into Ukraine. And if that happens, a protracted war is all but certain. Let's break down these developments for you from every angle. We'll start with America. Over the weekend, Blinken was a man on a mission. He said China is ready to arm Russia. And he used every possible forum to broadcast this message. What is the basis of this claim? Apparently, some credible intelligence inputs. And if it happens, it won't be a surprise. You see, China is already helping Russia. It is supplying important technology to Moscow. It is giving equipment with distinct military applications. Do you know who is exporting these goods? China's state-owned defense companies. And who are they selling to? Russian manufacturers. Russian state-owned manufacturers. 
Let me tell you more about the kind of equipment that China has sent to Russia so far. And I have a list. Navigation equipment for shipping, jamming technology, parts for fighter jets, and semiconductors or chips. Russia is also buying Chinese drones. The ones that are commercially available, the Russians are buying them. The Russian forces use them with explosives. So that's how Beijing has helped Moscow so far. They haven't sent any arms directly, but they've fulfilled important needs of the Russian military. All this equipment is technically meant for civilian use, but it serves more purposes. It can be reprocessed for the military. So you can say that so far the support was covert, but now China could expand the support. The U.S. says China is planning to send lethal weapons to Russia. Lethal support. What would that entail? What, what, what do you weapons. think of? Weapons. That's ammunition. That's Primarily weapons. Primarily. There's a whole gamut of things that, yeah. that, that fit in that category, for everything from ammunition to the weapons themselves. So far, Beijing has called for a peaceful resolution. It has supported Russia quietly, but it did not share lethal weapons. Is China now prepared to cross that line? It's hard to say. In Munich, Chinese officials stuck to their old talking points. The crisis in Ukraine is not what we want to see. We are deeply worried about the expansion and long-term effects of this war. Like all parties, we are deeply worried. China is not a party to the crisis in Ukraine, but we have not stood by and we have not done anything to add fuel to the fire. But Beijing could always deviate from that position. So here's a question. What's in it for China? Why would China arm Russia and further alienate the West? What are the immediate benefits for Beijing? Well, more influence over Russia for one. And that's a story in itself. How the Russia-China equation has changed. The Soviet Union, remember, was, was once China's big brother. Stalin famously made Mao wait for weeks for a meeting. But today, China holds the advantage. It's a bigger economy with more international clout. It is in a position to arm the Russians, and it can reinforce this advantage. But the bigger gain is long term. Arm the Russians, prolong the conflict, and bog America down with an endless war. The US and its allies will be tied up as Ukraine keeps increasing its demands, and this suits China. So it may work. But here's the flip side. Entering this war may also invite more Western sanctions. Can China afford that? They've just come out of a devastating third wave of the pandemic. Their economy depends on exports. They cannot afford to take a hit there. In 2021, exports made up about 20% of China's GDP. That should tell you something. Economic sanctions will deal a big blow to it. So the risk is high for Beijing. Dumping the zero COVID playbook came with huge costs. Can Xi Jinping afford another gamble? Again, it's hard to say, given how unpredictable he is, but if the past is any proof, we say expect the unexpected.